October 26th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Ezekiel chapters 1 through 3 of the Old Testament. In the thirtieth year, on the fifth day of the fourth month, while I was among the exiles at the Kibar River, the heavens opened, and I saw a divine vision. On the fifth day of the month, it was the fifth year of King Jehoiakim's exile. The word of the Lord came to the priest Ezekiel, the son of Buzi, at the Kibar River in the land of the Babylonians. The hand of the Lord came on him there. As I watched, I noticed a windstorm coming from the north, an enormous cloud with lightning flashing, such that bright light rimmed it and came from it like glowing amber from the middle of a fire. In the fire were what looked like four living beings. In their appearance, they had human form, but each had four faces and four wings. Their legs were straight, but the soles of their feet were like calves' feet. They gleamed like polished bronze. They had human hands under their wings on their four sides. As for the faces and wings of the four of them, their wings touched each other. They did not turn as they moved, but went straight ahead. Their faces had this appearance. Each of the four had the face of a man, with the face of a lion on the right, the face of an ox on the left, and also the face of an eagle. Their wings were spread out above them. Each had two wings touching the wings of one of the other beings on either side, and two wings covering their bodies. Each moved straight ahead. Wherever the spirit would go, they would go without turning as they went. In the middle of the living things was something like burning coals of fire or like torches. It moved back and forth among the living beings. It was bright and lightning was flashing out of the fire. The living beings moved backward and forward as quickly as flashes of lightning. Then I looked and I saw one wheel on the ground beside each of the four beings. The appearance of the wheels and their construction was like gleaming jasper and all four wheels looked alike. Their structure was like a wheel within a wheel. When they moved, they would go in any of the four directions they faced without turning as they moved. Their rims were high and awesome and the rims of all four wheels were full of eyes all around. When the living beings moved, the wheels beside them moved. When the living beings rose up from the ground, the wheels rose up too. Wherever the spirit would go, they would go and the wheels would rise up beside them because the spirit of the living being was in the wheel. When the living beings moved, the wheels moved, and when they stopped moving, the wheels stopped. When they rose up from the ground, the wheels rose up from the ground. The wheels rose up beside them because the spirit of the living being was in the wheel. Over the heads of the living things was something like a platform, glittering awesomely like ice, stretched out over their heads. Under the platform, their wings were stretched out, each toward the other, each of the beings also had two wings covering its body. When they moved, I heard the sound of their wings. It was like the sound of rushing waters or the voice of the Almighty or the tumult of an army. When they stood still, they lowered their wings. Then there was a voice from above the platform over their heads when they stood still. Above the platform over their heads was something like a sapphire shape like a throne. High above on the throne was a form that appeared to be a man. I saw an amber glow like a fire enclosed all around from his waist up. From his waist down I saw something that looked like fire. There was a brilliant light around it, like the appearance of a rainbow in the clouds after the rain. This was the appearance of the surrounding brilliant light. It looked like the glory of the Lord. When I saw it, I threw myself face down, and I heard a voice speaking. He said to me, Son of man, stand on your feet, and I will speak with you. As he spoke to me, a wind came into me and stood me on my feet, and I heard the one speaking to me. He said to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the house of Israel, to rebellious nations who have rebelled against me. Both they and their fathers have revolted against me to this very day. The people to whom I am sending you are obstinate and hard-hearted, and you must say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. And as for them, whether they listen or not, for they are a rebellious house, 
they will know that a prophet has been among them. But you, son of man, do not fear them and do not fear their words, even though briars and thorns surround you and you live among scorpions. Do not fear their words and do not be terrified of the looks they give you, for they are a rebellious house. You must speak my words to them, whether they listen or not, for they are rebellious. As for you, son of man, listen to what I am saying to you. Do not rebel like that rebellious house. Open your mouth and eat what I am giving you. Then I looked and realized a hand was stretched out to me and in it was a written scroll. He enrolled it before me and it had writing on the front and back. Written on it were laments, mourning, and woe. He said to me, Son of man, eat what you see in front of you. Eat the scroll and then go and speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth and he fed me the scroll. He said to me, Son of man, feed your stomach and fill your belly with the scroll I am giving to you. So I ate it and it was sweet like honey in my mouth. He said to me, Son of man, go to the house of Israel and speak my words to them. For you are not being sent to a people of unintelligible speech and difficult language, but to the house of Israel, not to many peoples of unintelligible speech and difficult language, whose words you cannot understand. Surely if I had sent you to them, they would listen to you. But the house of Israel is unwilling to listen to you because they are not willing to listen to me. For the whole house of Israel is hard-headed and hard-hearted. I have made your face adamant to match their faces and your forehead hard to match their foreheads. I have made your forehead harder than flint, like diamond. Do not fear them or be terrified of the looks they give you, for they are a rebellious house. And he said to me, Son of man, take all of my words that I speak to you to heart, and listen carefully. Go to the exiles, to your fellow countrymen, and speak to them. Say to them, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, whether they pay attention or not. Then a wind lifted me up, and I heard a great rumbling sound behind me, as the glory of the Lord rose from its place, and the sound of the living beings' wings brushing against each other, and the sound of the wheels alongside them, a great rumbling sound. A wind lifted me up and carried me away. I went bitterly, my spirit full of fury, and the hand of the Lord rested powerfully on me. I came to the exiles at Tel Abib, who lived by the Kibar River. I sat dumbfounded among them there where they were living for seven days. At the end of seven days, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, I have appointed you a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you must give them a warning from me. When I say to the wicked, you will certainly die, and you do not warn him, you do not speak out to warn the wicked to turn from his wicked deed and wicked lifestyle so that he may live, that wicked person will die for his iniquity, but I will hold you accountable for his death. But as for you, if you warn the wicked and he does not turn from his wicked deed and from his wicked lifestyle, he will die for his iniquity, but you will have saved your own life. When a righteous person turns from his righteousness and commits iniquity, and I set an obstacle before him, he will die. If you have not warned him, he will die for his sin. The righteous deeds he performed will not be considered but I will hold you accountable for his death. However, if you warn the righteous person not to sin and he does not sin, he will certainly live because he was warned and you will have saved your own life. The hand of the Lord rested on me there and he said to me, get up, go out to the valley and I will speak with you there. So I got up and went out to the valley and the glory of the Lord was standing there, just like the glory I had seen by the Kibar River. And I threw myself face down. Then a wind came into me and stood me on my feet. The Lord spoke to me and said, Go shut yourself in your house. As for you, son of man, they will put ropes on you and tie you up with them, so you cannot go out among them. I will make your tongue stick to the roof of your mouth, so that you will be silent and unable to reprove them, for they are a rebellious house. But when I speak with you, I will loosen your tongue and you must say to them, 
This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Those who listen will listen, but the indifferent will refuse, for they are a rebellious house. God, a lot of people don't like reading Ezekiel because uh, it's odd. <laughs> and we start off with oddness and things, uh, things get even more from there. And a lot of people tend to skip this book. Uh, but I love it. I love it in the same way that I love poetry or some of the classics where things aren't right in front of your face. You have to uh, weed through and figure out what things actually mean. Uh, Ezekiel is very esoteric. One of my books describe him like a kaleidoscope where things come into view and out of view very quickly. But I, I enjoy reading Ezekiel, and I think he has some very important messages uh, to share, obviously at that time with your people, but I think it is timeless in the sense of sharing these messages with all people. We know that Ezekiel was probably about 30 when he started uh, speaking these words of prophecy. We know that he had been in that first wave of people exiled into Babylon, uh, and he'd been there for about five years at that point. Uh, he continued prophesizing about your will and, and your word for about the next 20 or so years. Uh, into being late 40s, early 50s. Uh, we know that one of his biggest concerns was the dichotomy between how supreme you are versus how sinful we are and that offense in between of offending this, this supreme, holy, um, sovereign God. And what did that look like to the people of that day? And so that's what I mean. Like, I think this holds true for anybody in any, any time period. I also love that we can find so many pieces within Ezekiel that we've already seen in other parts of the Bible or we'll see at the Daily Video Bible uh, Project. You know, we talk about in Solomon's temple where they created those gigantic seraphim with their wings touching. And we hear echoes of this in Ezekiel's uh, vision. Um, and hopefully a lot of people listening to this reading God also thought back to Isaiah when we talked about his, his vision in the temple room of these seraphim with these multiple wings flying all over the place. Very similar to that. Um, and we haven't got to recording Revelation yet, but we will. But the four faces that Ezekiel talks about, we also see that in uh, Revelation as well. We see Daniel in the Old Testament referred to as son of man. And here, uh, the only other person we see to uh, referred to as that is Ezekiel, a son of man. Ezekiel's actually <laughs> not even referred to as himself, which to me really echoes again that main theme of how sovereign you are and how little we should think of ourselves um, almost as Ezekiel not talking about himself in first person but simply as the as the son of man but my favorite part in these first couple chapters first few chapters of Ezekiel is how loud the great commission speaks here in Ezekiel. We're used to reading about the Great Commission in the New Testament and talking about it um, from an Acts uh, chapter 1 church and uh, going and sending. There's not a lot of times when people are like, oh, Ezekiel talks about the Great Commission. Yeah, he totally does in these first uh, few chapters and, and will throughout Ezekiel as well. Um, God first and foremost asked him to eat of this message that he wants to share. So first and foremost for us to understand the word of God. And we do that obviously by reading your word in the Bible and, and having conversations with you or praying to you um, throughout the day and, and learning. So Ezekiel first and foremost had to learn about your word. And in this case, he ate your word. And then a couple different places, you say, now go and speak, go and do, go and speak. 
and our our great commission is the exact same thing in order to go we have to first and foremost understand the incredibleness of what you've actually done in our lives uh, just like Ezekiel did when he ate of the word um, then he had to go and he had to speak and here here's where to me it gets really exciting a lot of times people in fact I just had a person say this to me the other day ah, I totally believe in God but I'm not really sure I want to embrace that lifestyle because so much of me will have to change and of course the ensuing conversation was quite interesting God as you already know um, but even Ezekiel was a little bit worried about that he thought for sure that these words he was about to eat would be bitter and he was pleasantly surprised my own words but pleasantly surprised that they were sweet like honey um, most people are fearful of losing the worldly life that they have the materialistic life that they had the the life that the world approves of uh, it's a scary thing to give that up for something that you think is going to cause you to have less whereas once you're on the other side you know it's so much more uh, and so it was really fun to hear Ezekiel's words that he was surprised that it was sweet like honey and then part two you say and by the way I'm going to ask you to speak but I'm going to close your mouth <laughs> I'm sure Ezekiel was like I'm sorry what you want me to go tell people things but you won't even let me open my mouth and you say no 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 I will open your mouth for you I will loosen your tongue um, and when we go to talk to people when we do the go and do go and speak to people a lot of times we're afraid to share the gospel because we're afraid of what people will think of us we're afraid of what people will say we're afraid of how people will react but the thing we have to keep in mind every time we share the gospel with somebody is it's you speaking, it's you working. Uh, whatever I obediently say, you're going to work for the best in that situation. Now, granted, sometimes I fully realize it's going to be like your people back then who were belligerent and rebellious uh, when people tried to speak truth into their lives. I totally get that. But I also know if I'm being obedient to you, you're in control of the situation that whatever you need to have come out of that situation will happen I also know that your words never return void that to get those words into somebody's life it will start to work into their heart and work into their mind and work into their life and you will continue to do what you need them to do to listen to your word so I love this God this this huge presentation of what honestly is the Great Commission to first and foremost be a follower of Christ uh, a eater of his words and I love that uh, and then to go and speak to go and do and then when we speak to fully understand that it's not our words that we're using so there should be no fear whatsoever that it will be your words and your actions if we're being obedient uh, that will come through God, I'm excited to read Ezekiel and, and have conversations about it and to really find out what's going on behind these grandiose, crazy, awesome visions that Ezekiel's sharing with us so that we can understand what you're trying to tell us and how we can use it in our own lives. In your son's name I pray. Amen.